Hello, Thrivers. Here we are on our final day of our Better Me, Better Marriage Challenge. We are on day number 18. Can you believe it? 18 days of this incredible, incredible challenge. How has it affected you? What insights have you gained? Are you living with greater awareness, greater clarity? Have your eyes been opened that victimhood is a choice and that choosing to have conflict is a choice? I have put this on my bathroom mirror and I'm going to keep it there. It's going to take a permanent residence there. Do I want to experience peace or do I want to experience conflict? Beautiful. I'd love to hear from you and see how this challenge has helped you and what differences it has made for you in your life, in your awareness, and who you're choosing to become each and every moment of the day. Now, yesterday we had a bit of a challenge. I was taking my daughter to preschool and our car broke down right in front of the school. Oh my goodness. All right. So a little bit of context here. We have seven children. It's not easy to find a vehicle that isn't a monster van that holds seven children. So we've customized this Suburban to have an extra bench in the back row so that we can fit our large family and take them around. So for this vehicle to break down, I had to call a tow truck, waited 35 minutes in front of the school, and honestly, I was a little bit humiliated, a little bit scared, and a little bit frustrated. But I was able to take my daily morning ritual, which is a practice that Mark and I teach in our restoration equation. And part of that goes like this. I know that I'm stronger than any challenge. A failure, setback, or struggle to me is still a step forward, and it's still a win. And so I have learned to take all of my life challenges, all of life struggles, and to see them as a win. And so I took this moment as I was feeling some stress, I was feeling a little bit of fear. Uh, we did not anticipate having to fix or repair or replace our car at this time. And I just started to turn around in my mind just in the method that we teach to help everyone cope with the challenges of life, but even more importantly, help couples that are struggling to be able to reconnect with each other and navigate those challenges successfully. And so I started turning it around and I have learned that we have a choice in anything. We can either bless a situation or we can curse it. The normal human reaction is to start cursing things when they aren't going our way. More importantly, sometimes we're even cursing the very things that we want. Let me give an example. So my car is broken down. My baby's crying because I was needing to get her home for a nap. Um, my little daughter, Kiri, who's four, was delighted by the whole idea of a big tow truck coming and we got to ride in it. And as I'm sitting there with my broken down car and feeling some frustration <laughs> and a little bit of humiliation because I'm literally right in front of the school in like the drop off area, uh, one of the other moms comes driving up beside me and she is in her beautiful new 2019 Cadillac Escalade, okay? In the past, I'm gonna be completely honest, I would have been envious. She's one of those women that's just always well-dressed. Her children always look perfect. They always seem so happy, right? Everything on the external looks so ideal. And sometimes when we compare ourselves to someone else, especially our worst to their best, then we are starting to curse the very thing that we want. Of course, I would love a beautiful, brand new, large vehicle for my family. In fact, it's on my vision board. I want a stretched Cadillac Escalade. <laughs> and so instead of any of those envious feelings, I've learned to bless them instead. And so I just sent out a prayer, a blessing to her, and a blessing that she has such a beautiful, nice new vehicle, a blessing that that can be an inspiration to me, and a blessing that I'm in this situation because I've learned every awful, difficult, challenging, frustrating circumstance gives me compassion and understanding for others. I'm sure that it, when you look back on the times in your life, you can see the same pattern. You have a new understanding of what it's like that you wouldn't have had if you hadn't gone through those experiences. So we can bless them even when we're in the midst of them. All right. Now, I'm not a super sentimental person as far as like emotionally attaching to objects, but I recognize I do have some emotional attachment to this car. We have had it for eight years. I carried home each of my newborn baby girls all four of them in that same vehicle. We got on so many family vacations. Um, I actually went into labor with one of our daughters in that car. And I don't know, I just, with all of the changes that we've had, 
being diagnosed with cancer, driving up for treatments. It was always in that vehicle. And then when we moved, we've actually moved six times in four years, just as we've been recovering financially and having to make a lot of transitions. That car has been a stable in my life. And so to see it give out on me was unsettling, not gonna lie. So maybe it was a little more challenging than it should have been. It's just a car. But I've got some emotional attachment there, right? That's been a stable thing in my life through all of the changes and all the uncertainty. And so now for it to give out on me brought in a little bit of that uncertainty. And so instead of cursing the situation, I was just overwhelmed with gratitude that this vehicle served us so well and that we're able to carry our large family in it. I didn't even know how I'd pick up my kids later in the day uh, to pick the, all of them up from school. And I was just grateful that, you know, Ben was able to get off work, that he has a job that allows him to do that, that he, you know, his flight commander was okay with him stepping away, that he was there and able to diagnose what was going on with the car. I was grateful to my brother-in-law who lent us his Suburban today so that we could <laughs> carry around, taxi around our big family. And so in a very stressful and challenging situation that truly would have completely set me off for the rest of the day in a very negative, bad, stressed out, fearful kind of mood and envious of others, instead choosing to bless the situation and choosing to give love and appreciation and gratitude for the good experiences that we've had with that vehicle, the blessing that it's been in our lives, the blessing of other people willing to help us out, the blessing of my husband and his knowledge and expertise and on and on and on. And so bringing strength to that challenge is just another testament to me that we all have the power within us to choose at any moment. Do I want to experience peace or do I want, no, that's backwards. Do I want to experience conflict? So small experience, it's a micro experience in the big realm of life. It's not the biggest challenge I'm ever gonna face. However, I can recognize the growth and the progression that I have had personally as I have learned to apply this in my life and as I apply the method that Mark and I specifically teach with our morning formula because I'm constantly conditioning my mind to see the world that way. There's a saying, I believe it was the, no, was it the Trojans? Now I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> but the saying goes like this. I believe it was the Trojans. That he who sweats most in training bleeds less in war. And so Mark and I, we are doing the training every single day to keep our mindset sharp, to keep our mental faculties sharp, to keep our emotions centered, to be in alignment with what we really want. And we teach that exact method to our clients, which is why they have such great results, because it all starts within. So what does that look like for you? What, how can you apply this yourself? What can you do in your training to sweat more in your training so that when the challenges come, you're bleeding less and more, right? What can you do starting today to get yourself there? Hey, Edna, Vanessa, Eric, Betsy, and everyone else joining. Really good to have you. All right, so it's our last day, and there is no lesson on the back. This is it, my friends. All right, I'm going to try to read it like this. I am responsible for all I think, say, and do. And today, I choose to make all my decisions based on love instead of fear. Ah, your light is all I see and is but a reflection of the light in me. Beautiful. So what stands out to you most about this? I am responsible for all I think, say, and do. And today I choose to make all my decisions based on love instead of fear. Have you experienced that in your life? Have you experienced that today? As you're moving and going about your day and the challenges happen, the car breaks down, the spouse does or says, does, says something, right? The kids act out. Are you choosing to act from a place of love? instead of fear. How has that helped you to shift things for you? And if you feel like, you know what, I'm not quite there yet, I'm still on the journey, then send out this declaration, I choose love instead of fear. I am responsible for all I think, say, and do. I choose love instead of fear. So put that in the comments right now, I choose love instead of fear. And every day going forward, even as we conclude this challenge, let's make that our intention. Let's make that our focus because there is love within us and love is so much more powerful than fear. Appreciation is so much more powerful, powerful than criticism, anger, bitterness, any of those negative emotions that drag us down. So choose at this moment right now to experience love 
and to allow that to be your dominant state to be the way that you choose to approach the world, the way that you choose to behave and interact with others. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> all right, so that is the conclusion of our challenge. I applaud everyone who has done so incredibly well with this. I encourage you to keep going. And if you would like us to do another challenge, if you'd like me to do another daily challenge with you, I would be more than happy to. I have loved and appreciated all of this and appreciate the feedback I've gotten from you and how you have inspired me. So let me know what kind of challenge would you want. Would you want another gratitude challenge? Would you like a communication challenge? Would you like a personal growth mindset kind of challenge? Let me know if you're up for that. I'd love to hear from you guys. I appreciate you. My heart, my love go out to you. I will see you in just a few minutes here with our amazing Leah Deardorff Smith. I know that a lot of you just absolutely love her. She's a rock star. She's so dynamite and her light just emanates. So she is going to show us how to keep going even when it's really hard, how to have the motivation to keep going when your spouse isn't giving you the kind of responses that you want, when you're not seeing the positive changes that you want. How do you keep going? And she speaks from her heart because she has been through it. So really excited for that. Going to see you over there in a little bit. Awesome, Vanessa. Appreciate you guys. My heart, my love, my appreciation goes out to you today. Let's choose love instead of fear.